Okay. Yeah, and another thing generally people say regard like you already mentioned about difficulties, and sometimes people also say that Saturn actually because it's the karaka of the six, eight, twelve houses, these dustana. So it shows not only our weaknesses, but it shows that where we have done sins and bad activities in our past lives. That is more maybe of Rahu, but so but they say Saturn also signifies our bad karma, or I mean, apart from the weaknesses. So yeah well the thing about saturn is is that we we blame a lot of things on saturn that i really think we need to blame on ketu okay <laughs> when you start studying the avashtas of saturn you really realize saturn's not a very bad planet for instance saturn is only an enemy to the sun he's not an enemy to any other planet so if he aspects mars if he aspects jupiter if he aspects um any of the other planets, he's not actually causing you to have any less happiness except the sun. Now, on, on the other hand, Saturn has three enemies. Mars is an enemy, moon is an enemy, and the sun is an enemy to Saturn. And so Saturn usually causes problems because he has so many enemies that are forcing him to cause trouble in our lives. And it's because of what we expect from Saturn. For instance, when moon aspects Saturn, a person wants the thing to make them happy that they don't have. Because, you know, think of what Saturn is. Saturn is what is not yours, right? That's why Saturn represents loss. Because it's not yours, you don't get to keep it. On the other hand, the sun represents what is ours. And the moon represents what we need. So if you get a person who's got moon aspecting Saturn, then literally the person needs moon something that doesn't belong to them, Saturn. So they're never happy in life because they always want the thing they don't have. No matter how much good things they have in their life, they always want the thing they don't have, which is Saturn. But the Saturn things are the things we have to let go. So when they get married, they're in love with somebody else because they're in love with the person they don't have. They won't be happy until they get the person they don't have. And when they get that person, they're not happy either. Okay? So... Saturn gets a bad rap because he's often starved. But really what Saturn is, on a high level, if we would just get our egos out of the way, is that we're meant to come to Earth to experience something. And in that experience, have a level of fulfillment. And when that fulfillment is done with, to say, okay, I've had enough of that. I'm, I'm at peace with that. Therefore, I don't need it anymore. Okay? But what happens instead, people come here, they have a partial fulfillment with something, a miserable fulfillment, a lackluster fulfillment, an, an unfull fulfillment with something. <laughs> then when it's time for that thing to end, they cry. It's like if you go to eat at a buffet, and if you go to the buffet and you eat everything you want and you're all content and filled, there's a point where you're really ready just to stop eating and leave the buffet, right? But what if you go to the buffet and halfway through the meal, you're still really hungry and there's still lots of dessert you want to eat and all of a sudden they shut the buffet down and you don't get to finish. Then you're going to be very frustrated. And that's what happens with Saturn in this yuga. In this yuga, the things of the world, our consciousness is only developed to where we can experience them un, to a lack of fulfillment, to a partial fulfillment. So when it's time for things to end, which is Saturn, we cry about it. In Satya Yuga, when, time, when it's time for things to end, we've, in that Yuga, we have the consciousness, uh, meant to, you know, the development to experience things in a way that they can fulfill us. So in the end, we're at peace with them ending, and we move on with the way God intended. So if we look at Saturn in the sky, it's really the most beautiful of all the planets. Anyone who looks through Saturn through a telescope goes, oh my God, that's my favorite one. It's the beautiful one. Because Saturn ultimately represents having come to a point of, of something where we're ready to let go of it because we want something else. But in this yuga, our ego's never ready to let go of anything. It just wants more from that thing, more from that thing, begging for more, more from my wife, more from my children, more from my job, more from this, more from this. And that's a problem with our attitudes. And because of that, when things are time to end or when things only give this much, we complain about it. So I think in Satya Yuga, Saturn will not be causing us as much grief because it's not that it's necessarily a bad karma planet. Our bad karma actually is all circulating around K2. Um, and so is our, most of our good karma. That's the real karmic planet of the past. 
Saturn is related to K2 and has some strong connotations with it. But Saturn ultimately is a planet of saying, okay, I've had that and I'm ready to let go of this experience and move on. I've had married life and now I'm ready to move on to a different experience. You know, I've had my buffet and now I'm ready to do something else with my time. So if we can just look at endings as a signal of it's time to be at peace with what we've had that, okay, I've gotten what I'm allotted to and now I can move on peacefully, but our ego doesn't want to do that. So Saturn causes problems. Um, now when Saturn's conjunct the planet, it's, it's different though. When Saturn conjuncts a planet, there is a karmic allotment. But in general, Saturn is not um, meant to be a planet to terrorize us. It just often hurts us because he has so many enemies that Saturn gets starved, which means we don't use Saturn correctly. And I can't get into that now because that's three hours of lecture. I have it in my Lajitani Avashtas course. But the diseases we have, the mental, emotional, and physical diseases we have that make our lives miserable are largely because Saturn is getting starved by the Sun, Moon, or Mars. Okay, it's not Saturn causing those diseases. Saturn is disease resistance. Saturn is our ability to deal with stress without getting diseased. But if Saturn's starved by the Sun, Moon, or Mars, then we lose resistance to disease and we suffer emotionally, we suffer mentally, we suffer egocentrically, and we suffer physically. But that's not even Saturn's fault. That's because Saturn's being afflicted by an enemy. And unfortunately, Saturn only has two friends, Mercury and Venus. So he's more likely starved in most charts than he is delighted by friends because he simply has three enemies and only two friends. Okay? So he gets a bad rap because he's getting beat up not because of what he's actually doing. The only time he's really actually doing something to really cause you problems is when he's conjunct another planet. Okay. Or if he's aspecting the sun. Okay. Yeah, and uh, before we move on to the conjunctions, there's one more question which many people mm -hmm. ask. So it's like Saturn as a planet, we, as you spoke, but uh, some people also say that if, if there are planets in the sign Capricorn and Aquarius, Mm -hmm. then Saturn may not be conjunct them or aspecting them, but you will still have those flavors. Okay. Um, if with the Avashtas, the conditions of the planets, a planet joined, aspected, or in the sign of a friend is delighted and happy, and that's a natural friend, not a compound friend, and a planet joined, aspected, or conjunct an enemy is starved except that Jupiter always delights the planet he's with, makes it full, and Saturn always starves the planet he's conjunct, okay? So if you get a planet in Capricorn or Aquarius, if Saturn's a friend of that planet, that planet will be delighted and do well. So that means Venus. Venus in those signs will be happy. Then if Saturn starves a planet, if Saturn's an enemy to a planet, that planet in his sign will be starved. That means the sun. The sun is who Saturn is an enemy to. The other planets, Saturn's neutral to the other planets. And so any of the other planets aren't any happier or less happier by being in Saturn's sign. So, and this is in the context of the fulfillment you get with the planet, which is all that really matters. Does this planet allow you to be happy or miserable? That's really at the end of the day, all that matters. Now, any planet in the sign of Saturn can have its successes delayed because Saturn is a slow-moving planet, okay? Um, planets in the sign of Saturn can take more work to complete, but that doesn't mean it's, it's not fulfilling because you can do fulfilling work or unfulfilling work, right? Just because you're working doesn't necessarily mean it's unfulfilling. So yes, there will be Saturn connotations if it's in the sign of Saturn, but not negative Saturn connotations, not connotations that make you feel miserable at the end of the day, unless the planet is starved by Saturn, which is, is the sun, which is the only planet starved there. But the sun fortunately has several friends, and so quite often he'll get some aspects of friends that help the sun um, get made up by that starvation. That's why people who've got the sun in, you know, for two months of the year in Capricorn and Aquarius aren't all miserable people because usually there's planets helping out their sun. The sun has more, en more friends than enemies. So more often than not, he'll be delighted um, and the very opposite of Saturn. 
But this principle of friends and enemies and what they do to plants is the single most important principle when it comes to seeing how planets are affecting other planets. And people I've taught this technique, different people have both told me this is the missing link. They've been studying astrology 30 years, and this is the thing that they needed to fill the holes in, in their horoscopes. Very important principle. I consider it the single most important technique from the Brihat Parashara. Yeah, and one last question I would love to ask is like, this is Saturn gets directional strength in the seventh house. Mm -hmm. And many people say that this is primarily because seventh house is the house of desire and the person keeps working, working, working. So how have you seen this placement in isolation? Okay. Well, not a, it's not that. Okay, so what Digbala does is, is we di are we directing our lives towards the thing of that planet? So what is Saturn? Saturn is isolation. It's separation. It's working on yourself. It's working alone. Okay. So when Saturn's in the seventh house, the, the planet directs their life to more activities with they, that they do alone. So, and it does that, of course, by separating people from their lives, by delaying their relationships with people. So the person spends more time doing Saturn things when Saturn's in the seventh. Yogananda said, greatness requires solitude. To become great at anything, you have to spend time alone. Whether you want to be a great yogi, you need to meditate alone. If you want to be a great guitar player, you got to practice your guitar six hours alone every day. You know, if you want to be a great gymnast, you have to be alone practicing. You know, if we want to be successful at anything, be great at anything. We have to be alone. When Saturn's in the seventh, it gives us that alone time. And they say if three planets are in Digbala, you'll become a king, okay? Because it gives a lot of focus and direction to a planet. Now, if you watch people who've got Saturn in the first house, their ability to be alone is very little. They just can't be alone. They just, have, they just can't be alone and be productive. And so they rarely become as great of a people because they just simply don't spend the time alone. Saturn's a very important planet for the greatness that we can achieve in this world because it's a child of the sun, so it does have the ability to become a king. It's also the primary karaka for the um, Dasamsha Varga, the D10, which is the house of great fruits, the big things we do in life. And when it's in the first house, the person simply doesn't take advantage of the alone time to really develop the way a person with Saturn in the seventh house does. Okay, but dig ball is a very important concept. All the six balas of Shad Bala have something different to say about the planet. And the directional strength of dig ball simply shows do we direct our life towards the use of that planet? Yes or no? And are we using Saturn more? The more closer it is to the seventh house, the more we're directing our life towards Saturnian directions. And part of that is becoming a, a great person. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> okay. okay, so now we will uh, proceed to the conjunctions. So we'll okay. upload it in the next part. So stay tuned. Okay, so thank you very much. We'll upload again. Sure, my pleasure.